like, is that where we were before we were born? Because technically, before we were born, we were dead because we weren't alive. This is the Creative Podcast with Jeff and Gus. I am Gus. And I'm Jeff. That's Jeff. We have a very special guest today. She's an amazing photographer. She does set designs. And her name, and I might pronounce it weird, it's Karen Jerzyk. Yeah, that's it. Nailed it. <laughs> yeah, that's rare. You should, I should like mail you like a uh, a trophy of some sort. Certificate. Yeah. yeah. I'll take it. I, I need a certificate. <laughs> um, yeah, what I did is it's called the, uh, you know, you kind of extend how you're going to like, you know, I'll talk about you a little bit. Like I said, you're an amazing photographer, set design. And then I quickly looked at your name on this you know and i was like okay i'm gonna try this live and it kind of worked <laughs> just throw, yeah secret. just diving right in right that's into the, the cold water you did it though that's that's it jersey yeah um <laughs> so you want to tell the peeps a little bit about yourself just uh you know some of the highlights i guess if, if i didn't nail it in that short three second <laughs> intro <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's about it. I, uh, I'm always weird when people ask me, like, because I'm, like, I'm self-employed, like, uh, photography is nice. all I do, so, you know, when people are like, oh, what do you do for a job? I always just seem weird saying, or I feel weird saying I'm a photographer, because there's always, like, that. I, I'm from New Hampshire, too, so it's not a very, uh, it's a pretty conservative state. Um, yeah. So I, I feel like immediately when I'm like, Ooh, I'm an artist or like <laughs> scumbag. <you know? laughs> so like, I, I never know what to say to people um, when they ask. But yeah, I'd say photographer, um, set designer. I kind of like dabble in like video too. That was that was kind of my original um, interest was uh, when I was yeah. like in high school. I really wanted to do like video type stuff, but um i'm gonna sound like i'm 80 years old but when i was in high school back in my time uh (laughs) it was like a million dollars to go to film school like i graduated high school in 1999 and like there wasn't really any like oh you can just take classes online kind of thing so i didn't go to film school i ended up going and getting my ba in english uh and not doing anything with it and going in debt uh and still paying off my student loans but yeah I guess I try to I just usually just say blanket statement that I'm a photographer but um yeah I do, I do a lot of painting Amazing. too like I paint a lot of my sets I guess maybe like right. if you want to be like bougie about it you can say interior designer <laughs> <laughs> like because when I when I go into like abandoned houses and stuff I usually like arrange the furniture and stuff like I'm Martha Stewart, that shit. <laughs> you have a good, you have a really good eye for it. Like you, I, I mean, I've seen a lot of your photos for over the years, and I think you got a natural eye for it. And it's, isn't it strange that, like, it comes really natural to you, and it's almost like you're not even doing it. I mean, at least that's how I feel sometimes when you do this kind of stuff. It's so natural, but it's, it, it, I don't even understand, like, why is that what looks cool? And other people will agree. It's just, it's such a strange thing when you look at something and it's like, that's dog shit. That looks terrible. But that looks good. I, I don't yeah, even understand. I, that. You know what I mean? I have, like, this whole, like, theory that I kind of, like, in the past couple of years, I've been thinking about that. I, I think, I mean, it kind of goes along with, like, you can tell when people have, like, a Pinterest list of, like, here's all this stuff that I'm going to just copy into my work. And then, I mean, this goes for any kind of artist. And then you can tell the people that just, like, yeah, they just get it from, like, who knows where. I mean, like, with me, when people ask me, like, where do you get your ideas? How do (laughs) you... I I don't really have an answer to that. Um, You know, just, like, someone who's, like, really good at math. Why are they good? How are they going to answer you when you're like, why are you so good at math? (laughs) You know, it's like... Yeah, it's almost something that just happens. I really, I don't have like a really uh, profound answer to like, oh, this is like my whole process. This is, I mean, it's not really, there's a process in creating the images, but in terms of like thinking of them, yeah, it just, it just kind of happens. 
Yeah, it's, like, it's almost like who you really are. And when you're being true to yourself and your work, it, you know, it just sort of flows with you, I feel like. Right, right. I mean, definitely, like, I think, like, outside, you know, things that happen outside of me, like, um, like, in 2011, I always, I always reference this, my father passed away, like, really unexpectedly, and Mm -hmm. I, I think up until then, I wasn't really, like, I feel like everything's on, like, a wavelength, I'm gonna sound like a crazy person now, but, you know, it's like, we, we kind of tune into like whatever wavelength like we're meant to tune into and it's like I feel like my whole life I was supposed to be doing this but I just didn't I didn't know it yet I didn't realize it yet I was kind of lost and going down the wrong path and then when my father passed away I kind of just like immersed myself into you know what I was doing with the photography I didn't I didn't really care to make money at that time it was more of like a therapy thing um like I had to do that or I would die like I would you know I was very depressed um I I just I was depressed I was scared I didn't know how to like handle it like life was just very strange like when you lose someone like that it's just bizarre I I can't even explain it I'd never felt that way before so but (laughs) with with that it was kind of bittersweet because it's like my father passes away, but then it was like, boom, like something just clicked. Like I was, I was looking at things differently. I was like, it turned me into a different person. And I kind of like grabbed on to that, like frequency of like, like, there it is. This is what, this is my style. This is how I see the world. This is what I'm supposed to do. Um, so yeah, that, I forgot why I went on that no, tangent, I, why I was rambling, but, oh yeah, it was about the whole, like, how it just kind of, like, comes to you, and I always tell people that, like, yeah, your, your well, surroundings sure are also, me. I mean, can you guys hear me? Am I, yeah. Did I get cut out? No, no, no. I, I can hear everyone. Oh. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, yeah, I, I just heard this weird silence in, in uh. I think we'd picked up our own weird frequency or something, but um, (laughs) I heard this like quiet wave. (laughs) I thought I got taken out. Um, I was going to say is like, and maybe that maybe didn't want me to say what I was going to say. Who knows? Um, Yeah. I mean, I believe in like weird, weird things. And I, I see you have a lot of strange things in your work. And have you had any weird experiences like in your life besides, you know, dealing with, that kind of traumatic thing where, you know, that I can't imagine that um, being so close to someone and losing them, but has there been, you know, supernatural things that have been happening? Um, I mean, you said we can say anything, so here goes (laughs) (laughs) my, my whole life. Like I haven't really, I never really was like a partier. I didn't, you know, when people were like, I do acid, I do mushrooms, but it was always like when people were saying they did that kind of shit, it, it didn't appeal to me because it was all people doing it in like strange environments. And it, it was just like a weird, scary thing that I want to, I I didn't really want to like delve into or touch upon. Um, and then, you know, the past few years, like I've kind of, I've always been kind of like a depressed person. Like I just, I have to constantly fight it. I'm open with that. I know a lot of people deal with that. So like, I have no problem talking about it. I, I try to a lot because I understand it's good to, you know, for other people to be like, oh, someone else feels that way. Thank God. Because for, you know, I kind of grew up where it was like taboo. I grew, I was born in the 80s. So like, you know, it's like when I was a kid, it was kind of like taboo to just be like, I don't, you know, I feel weird. I feel depressed. So um, as I get older, I kind of like analyze that and I try to figure out, okay, like what's causing this and I, I just take a different approach to it, I guess. And um, so I started like taking mushrooms and uh, smoking DMT. And like what, when I do that, it's like my whole life, I was like looking for something like looking like for an outside, like, Oh, I feel so lost. Like there's something I'm supposed to be seeing or talking to or a certain way I'm supposed to be feeling, but I could never get there. And then, you know, kind of using psychedelics like that, not in a partying sense. I I think they've been given 
a really bad name because of people like that. Not saying, oh, don't have, go have fun, but for me, it's it's medicine. Um, so the past like three ish years, I've been kind of like dipping into that, and it's it, like so it just connected like all, all these like synapses and these like questions I had, and it's it was it's just so strange. So um, yeah, I think the more I kind of like use that kind of stuff for like healing myself and just you know just trying to make myself a better person and understanding like my feelings more I mean the thing is too when I when I do that yeah I I fully realize that I'm gonna head on you know sometimes I'll like be bawling my eyes out because it you know like I said it just kind of connects you know questions I have or stuff that was bothering me that, that I didn't necessarily know was bothering me um But it's just crazy. I mean, I'm so happy now that, you know, those, you know, psychedelics are being used more and more and tested for, you know, people that have like PTSD and people that are addicts and just to help people in general. You know, it's just the whole plant medicine thing, because like, man, it it, it's crazy. And it, it yeah, it's like when I first started doing it, I was like, this is it was almost like it sounds crazy, but it's like communicating with aliens it's like this is yeah it's a weird communication with a higher power it's not religion in a sense but it's like you you realize you know the w- there's something else out there there's something else watching over us and it's like i i couldn't find that i i'm not religious but because i you know use psychedelics i realize why people are religious Cause I think a lot of us were just lost and we're looking for like, you know, the, yeah. that higher power to guide us or just whatever. So, uh, yeah, yeah. it's I, been I, crazy kind of. That's, I mean, that's awesome to hear that. Like I've always been fascinated by DMT. I, I've never done it. I, I really don't do anything. Um, but DMT I, from what I've heard, it always sounds like it sounds scary to, to, you know, go on that kind of journey, but at the same time, it sounds pretty, personal and magical and not like a part not like a party thing at all like i don't think anyone's doing oh yeah yeah i mean yeah i yeah i I mean that's more of a yeah i haven't really heard anyone of like i'm gonna rip some dmt at a concert (laughs) like more mushrooms but Yeah. yeah i mean that that stuff is crazy it's just like it's like everything else you know it's just like chemically like enhancing your brain whatever but like with that it's like you go somewhere it's like holy shit like where was i like who was i talking to it's and it's like unexplainable but like you just feel like that acceptance and like oh it's just like all it's like love acceptance like all all the the greatest feelings that it kind of like it like reminds you of what we're supposed to be at like the the bare minimum of humans like without all this bullshit without like the yeah. social media the fighting the circus of what's on tv all the time it's like this is what it's supposed to be like and i think that's why it like for me it makes me want to be a better person because like you forget you know right. like with all the shit we're, we're bomb- bombarded with we literally are like our souls don't know how to feel certain ways anymore. So yeah. it's, it's like you feel that and it's like, Holy shit. I don't know what the, I didn't know I could be that happy. I didn't know I could feel that loved ever. It's like, here's a friendly reminder. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's but yeah, it's it, crazy. It, it seems like it definitely, definitely has a positive effect on your life and, and helps you out. Do you see it as a form of escapism though? If, if you're going into this world where everything's nice, but then you come back to reality. Um, no, it's not really escape. Like a lot of the times it is like personal stuff. Um, uh, like there was this, this one time where like, I, I had this, like, you know, you close your eyes and you just let whatever happens happens. And, uh, I had had this conversation with my mother like a month before, like I don't smoke DMT like all the time. You know, I, I do it when I feel I need it when I'm like, I'm getting depressed. I, you know, um, so like my mother and I had had a conversation how we always thought like my father might've been like a really depressed person, but he kind of hid it. And I guess that was like bothering me for a while. And, um, 
So I, I, you know, smoked DMT one night and it was like, I was shown like the first, like the first day my parents brought me home from the hospital and how like happy wow. my father was. And it's just shit like that where it's like, boom, like, oh my God, yeah. what? So That's it's like, tough. it's like weird, just personal. It's not always super personal, but it's like, it's just crazy. It, it takes what you're like subconsciously worried about sometimes and almost like fixes it I, yeah. I don't even know how to explain it it's i could go on for hours about just that. i don't even i feel like freaking joe rogan now because i brought it up no i, I, <laughs> I, I, I love like I all love the memes did. like the abc have you ever tried dmt or whatever <laughs> uh, dmt is i'm really fascinated by it um you know, I, I think one day I probably will try it. I don't know. I mean, uh, it's legal, right? I, I'm pretty sure it is. Um, I think it's like there's a lot of states that are definitely yeah. like, you know, it's just like marijuana now is pretty much legal anywhere, everywhere. Yeah. Um, but now like psychedelics are starting to be like decriminalized and stuff, which I didn't think we'd see in our lifetime. I'm really shocked. Um, but yeah, there's there's certain states and stuff that are definitely um, like decriminalizing it and using it for research and all that. That's good. Yeah, I mean, anything that helps us grow as humans, I think is uh, it's important. I, I I also get depression. I think my whole life, um, I never really talked about it either. But I think it's a thing common with artists in particular, you know. And and I think a lot of artists have a weird upbringing, and maybe that is part of it. But um, you know, it, it definitely is refreshing to hear other artists that like, go through those those kind of things, you know. And, and yeah, because yeah, it's it's not so much the depression that tends to bother me. It's like the loneliness sometimes, or or feeling like you're the only one feeling that way. And I think a lot of artists are like that, where you're kind of just like on the outs. You know, it's like you're just looking in that window of everyone else succeeding, or you know. Yeah, easily going out in public and having a great time, not having anxiety, and it's like, yeah, just like outside, just looking in. Sometimes it, it's kind of a terrible thing. So it's nice to reminded that there's other people around that that feel that way. For sure, yeah, and especially I think artists need that too because I I kind of always feel like a lot of artists are kind of um they're such outcasts where they don't have this mass bringing of, of people that get together and and do things like the way other groups of people do i could be wrong on that but it just seems that way to me no you're definitely right yeah i mean i like for a while you know i'd have friends always ask me like oh you want to go out for a drink like constantly and that's just it's just not my thing um yeah, one because i mean drinking's expensive and being an artist <laughs> as most people know you don't make much money so i'm like eh, i don't think i want to blow like a hundred bucks in a night drinking but <laughs> yeah. it's just yeah i mean that just going out amongst like a bunch of strangers like that isn't really my thing and it, it's kind of sometimes you know i lost friends that way too because it's like i kept saying no but then I'd invite them to stuff, but then what I was doing wasn't their thing. And it's kind of just, you know, it's disappointing and it sucks, but it, yeah. it, you know, you, you find the few people that are other weirdos, I guess it's, it right, takes yeah, a it, while, it, it, you know, it, it, and that, it, it, and that's kind of what I've like taught myself. It's like, I'm not just gonna all of a sudden be like, here's a hundred friends and you're <laughs> going to keep them for life. And it, you know, it takes going through life and finding people here and there, um, yeah. which I have to remind myself of all the time. You know, it's like I'm going to there's going to be more people that come into my life that are going to be cool. that are going to have the same yeah. interests. I mean, so I shouldn't feel so lonely about everything. Right. Well, thank God for the Internet. I mean, that's how we're talking right now. And, and I think it's it's definitely a could be a huge tool to artists. It could, you know, also could be this thing that could destroy you mentally but at the same time, it depends like how you use it, you know, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I love it too. Cause like, yeah, it, it, <clears throat> just the, all the other artists I find musicians, um, even like, it, do you guys follow Porus Walker on Instagram? No. Oh man. He's, 
he has like almost 500,000 followers and like all he does is like it's all just like dick drawings <laughs> it's just but there are ma- he does like some of them are like animated some of them have to like have like fireworks involved like firecrackers <laughs> so i wish i could like show a visual that like people listening are probably like what the hell but like just people like that with accounts like that were like i think he has so many followers because it's just it reminds everyone of just like being a kid and drawing that kind of shit. It's just <laughs> funny, you know? Yeah. So like, I, I love seeing his stuff in my feed because it just constantly makes me laugh no matter what kind of mood I'm in. I'm like, this is great. Like one of my friends showed me his work like a few years ago and I was just like, thank you. This yeah. is amazing. It sounds like something you can get excited for too. You're like, Oh, what's, what's the new dick this week? Like you get real excited <laughs> yeah. for it. He you know? sells, he sells merch and like, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's stuff you can't even like wear anywhere, but it would be amazing if you did. Like he sold out of them too. I wanted them. They're sweatpants and they just have like a giant, like, like elementary school drawn looking dick going down (laughs) one of the legs and i'm like that's amazing like i want to wear that to a family event and just offend everyone yeah but just but just (laughs) stuff like that like how you can kind of just like curate what you look at you know it's like i'm gonna follow some serious accounts and yeah, like the, the way I've been seeing the world for a little while is I, I feel like people subscribe to things like on, on all levels. Like if you watch the news, you subscribe to the news. If you if you hang out with these kind of people, like you subscribe to them almost. And right. uh, that's a strange way to look at things. But I, I always just step back and come up with these weird theories. I think that this helped me, you know, Um yeah, so I, I always like almost observe everything and everyone, and I probably I always get paranoid. I look like a nutcase. Like if I'm out in public <laughs> and someone sees me, like why is that guy staring at everyone like that? But I'm always just watching things. That, that's that's what I did as a kid. Like I I just watched how everybody acted and and waited for to do anything. Yeah, um, yeah. Like I didn't I didn't want to participate. I just wanted to to see what was going on. I felt like what the hell is this world? Yeah, and. I mean, it is good to, like, kind of assess, you know, like, if you want to kind of go into that group of people or, I mean, I get a lot of shit because, I mean, the photography world is hard because, you know, unlike a paint, I mean, even painters, like, deal with models and stuff, but it's, like, you have to deal with, like, groups of people. Um, So, like, when I first started shooting, like, I... I don't know if you guys remember that website, like Model Mayhem or whatever, but, uh, I remember that, you know, I, I use that at first. I didn't know, I didn't know what else to do. So I used that, but that had like a certain group of people on it. And after a while I was like, eh, I kind of want to move on from the certain group of people. I, I jumped into it too quickly. I didn't assess the situation and then people get pissed that I like backed away, but it's like, you know, for my own like mental health, I, yeah, I, I have to, like, really, like, watch. I'm very, like, guarded with who I, like, associate with, you know what I mean? So it's, like, sometimes I make the mistake of just jumping in, and it's, like, I shouldn't have jumped into this uh, little pod of people. I mean, just slowly yeah. back away. But... Do, you, do you ever go with, like, your instinct on a lot of things? Like, that's that's definitely what I've done. Like, that's the way I met Jeff, actually, is he was a very uh, not like me and not like him kind of instinctual, like, let's be good friends out of nowhere you know yeah yeah i think some yeah when you meet people sometimes like it just clicks definitely and i have had some people like that where it's like they're just like so easy to talk to you when you first meet them and you can almost like feel their energy that it's like a it's a good energy and it's like no you're you're definitely cool i'd like to keep in touch oh thank Um, you i I appreciate you saying that about me that's really nice (laughs) (laughs) you know seriously yeah i mean it's definitely important to like because like you said like about the kind of watching groups of people i don't i don't I'm not like a huge click person and that's like a huge thing. I, I thought like once I got out of like high school and stuff, that wouldn't be a thing. Like uh, yeah. my teachers told me that wouldn't be a thing. And now I'm like, it's actually worse as I get older. Um, yeah. 
so I try, I, yeah, I don't, I don't like subscribing to like one kind of like group or it's like, I, I just am who I am. Like, I don't, the other weird thing about like social media is people like make kind of like, per, like fake personas to either, you know, get more followers or just seem more appealing to people. And I'm not like that because then I feel like if I meet people in person, they're going to be very disappointed because I, <laughs> I'm just me, you know what I mean? I don't, when I dress myself, I'm not like, I wonder like what, like I'm not wearing a costume. Like some people wear costumes or it's very weird. Uh, yeah. it, it's just, it's weird to me that people make like, yeah, they make like characters of themselves. And like, I can't do that. It, I, it makes me uncomfortable. Like I want people to know who I am. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's important to just be yourself and, you know, whatever that is and, and how far you want to take it or how you're feeling that day. And, you know, I guess sometimes it changes, but yeah, it's, it's I think it shows in your work then. And uh, I think people could pick up on that if you're just legit, you know, or you're like pr- trying to be something that you're not. I think. Right. Right pick up on and, that and people tend to you know when i like photograph people especially like for the first time they tend to be like super nervous and like I, i'm the most laid back person it's weird that they even get nervous because i'm like what did i do like what did i put out there that <laughs> would make you <laughs> nervous and then i get paranoid that i'm doing the same thing that i just said that is weird um but i think that's just it comes with the territory that people are going to be nervous anyway i mean i get nervous about everything too but yeah i mean for me like when i'm shooting it's very important that people are like comfortable um you know comfortable and that they know what my personality is and that our personalities like vibe i mean it's not like we have to be like best friends and like the same exact things but yeah, I, I, I definitely, like, when, when I meet up with people to shoot, like, I don't want them to, it, they see me and they're like, oh, you're totally different than what I thought. This is weird. <laughs> and then it's that, like, weird <laughs> awkwardness. Yeah. Which I, I am always awkward anyway, so I guess everything I just said doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still going to put out awkwardness anyway, but. Yeah, well, it, it just kind of happens sometimes. Uh, I guess people probably feel like you are, you know, when you hold that camera, it almost feels like you're in charge in a sense. And maybe that, you know, it just starts to make them feel a certain way. No matter who you are, you have this camera. It's like, oh, you hold the magic. You hold the magical picture machine. I better, you know, I could be. I I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's strange, too, because, like, I, I never thought I would be in the position that I would be, like, giving direction to people or like because for for a while for the longest time I was just shooting like concerts like I was just doing band photography from like 2003 to like 2009 and that's that's all I did and that doesn't I mean I did like promos here and there but I was mostly just shooting like live stuff um which doesn't require like you know giving people direction or putting much thought into it and that's kind of why I stopped is because I mean after after years of doing it it just kind of wasn't satisfying um it wasn't very creative because it's like we're all there's like 10 people in the photo pit all getting essentially the same photo um Um, I was gonna ask you I'm sure you get this asked this all the time do you shoot weddings I do sometimes. Um, Actually, one of the last ones I shot, uh, uh, it was last year, and this couple that I had just, I had just met them. um, I think I used the the guy for like, I I had put out like a casting call that I I needed a guy for a shoot, and um, his fiance at the time had seen the casting call. She was like, "Oh, my fiance can do it." So I met them that way, but they hired me to go out to uh, Nevada and um, they just got eloped, but they did it um, in one of the like salt flats, like in the middle of the mountains, like a dry lake bed kind of salt flat thing. It was really cool. And like, like, then we went to a ghost town and we did all their wedding photos there. Um, So I I want to say I hate shooting weddings, but doing stuff like that is really cool. (laughs) 
Yeah, that sounds um, right up your alley. But I have shot the conventional yeah. standard weddings, and I don't know how people do it. Like, it's just not for me. Uh, the money's good, but like, I just I can't. <laughs> Well, that's, that's good to hear as a physician where you don't really have to do it, too, because I, I know that's like a bread and butter kind of business for a lot of photographers. And, and you're definitely very you got your own style and you're very uh, your own artist. And uh, it's awesome that you don't have to do that. You know, I think. That's, yeah, that's cool. I mean, I struggle like I I, I put it out there all the time. It's like I'm <laughs> I'm not rich. I can barely pay my bills. But like it definitely beats like working retail or just working for anyone else i guess i just had this conversation with someone today where like i'd rather be like like i work hard like i i spent like 40 to 60 hours like just building one set like oh, wow. constantly like lugging my stuff around to like i i vend a lot at events like selling my print so like yeah. i travel around doing that so like having to set that stuff up and break it down all the time but like Doing that for myself, I'll take that any day over, you know, busting my ass for someone else and just seeing no results because it's for someone else. Yeah, and you, <laughs> you know, know, you know like, you're building, you're building a life, a, a career, you know, and you know there's very, you know, there's chances that you can keep growing and growing and growing, and and I think that's probably right. what could fuel. Have you had a lot of things where, I mean, and this happened in my life, so I don't know if the same where like you think this big thing's gonna happen this huge opportunity and then it's either not legit or it just kind of doesn't happen or like things like that oh yeah all the time (laughs) um even like and again like i i share my failures all the time because it's like i for me when i was like first getting into like the whole photography thing it, it felt like everyone around me was just like oh I'm so successful I'm doing this and that and it would make me feel like shit because I'd be like what's my problem like why am I not but then I realized like people kind of just like you know they they put a yeah uh, it's a lot of fluff just to I think they think by like kind of building themselves up like that that they will get something I that's another thing where that I don't quite understand like what what the outcome is supposed to be but like yeah. For me, like, oh, God, I like I, I apply to galleries all the time. And usually what I get is, no, nope, we don't accept photography like that, which drives me insane because, you know, it's like I'm not sometimes I feel like I'm building like a, an art installation and I'm taking a photo of it. it it's weird. Yeah. Like, photo- yeah. like just galleries hate photography. Um, well, so that's, I, I, mean, I, that's stupid, I but what you do is is so much more beyond that and i think you know you're definitely one of my favorite photographers and 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 it's almost not even like you created your own thing i think that's what's special about you is like there's probably no school or way to learn to do what you do it's like you invented it right yeah yeah like my style i guess yeah is pretty i mean yeah it's me it's just Right, it's, it's like me. you yeah. doing your thing. Like you might, you might, like you said, you might work at convention. You might, you know, do this, do that. It's like you're building this this way to survive off your art and and doing it your way. And and I think that's uh, there's definitely a beauty to that. And I think that's probably why you'll always have a fan base. And I think it'll always grow because it just it doesn't really exist a lot. You know, there's not. Yeah. There's not. I, I've. It's like I've seen your work and then I'll come across stuff later and then I'll be, oh, this looks interesting. And then I'll, I'll realize, oh, it's your work just being shared. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like there's not there's really not too many. Out yeah, because I know like when when I first so, you know, we set you up to, to come on the podcast. And as soon as I saw your work, I was like, oh, I've seen this in High Fructose magazine. That's where I first saw your stuff. And I was like, I recognize this stuff. And it's it's so good. And, and and I feel like, the you know, calling you a photographer is just too generic of a term because you're you're creating worlds and then you just happen to capture it when that world existed in that moment of time. Right, and so yeah. like if, if, some, if I say somebody like, oh, yeah, my friend, she's a photographer, they'll probably think, oh, they probably take really classy photos of like a ladybug on a grass of, you know, blade of blade of grass. And that's what it is. But it's more like you're you know creating these worlds capturing it 
and then basically presenting that as this moment of time as opposed to you know like oh here's a you know ballerina at sunset or whatever it is you know you just you just i think it's tricky too nowadays because everybody has what they consider to be a phone on their or, you know a camera on their phone right. so you have all these you know people that are you know photographers because they own a camera but you know even that like you, you get lucky sometimes with that, but what you're doing is completely different. So is, is there another, because when you first started, I was like, do we, do we call her a photographer? Like she's much <laughs> more than that. So yeah, is I mean, there a better term for it? Yeah, I don't know. And that, and that's the thing, like that's, there's such a stigma around that word because that, what you just said about like, oh yeah, just taking a picture of like a lady bug on a blade of grass. Like not that that isn't, you know, that's cool in certain applications like i'm not you know shitting on that kind of photography but like i think i feel like for again for like when i apply to like a gallery you know i'll just like cold email galleries and be like hey you accepting submissions i'm a photographer and i'll like give them my link but i think uh link to my website but i think as soon as they see that word photographer that's what they're thinking of just the like oh i'm just someone's just standing like under a bridge in front of my camera <laughs> just clicking and i think they just immediately think that and they just don't go further they don't look at my they don't look at anything i think they're not even like following the link i don't know that well, that's definitely the frustrating part for me like what i struggle with um yeah it's it's almost like i feel like like my work is like cheapened like, oh, we don't accept photographers. And then I, I'm so, like, paranoid about my work. Like, I, I go through, like, every artist does. You guys probably understand. Like, you know, even when I vend at stuff, like, I'll be putting my photos out. And I'm looking at them. And I'm like, this is shit. Like, my whole life is shit. Everything <laughs> I've done is shit. This is horrible. So, like, when I get, like, the rejection like that, it's just yeah it kind of like cheapens what I do and like I, I definitely question myself because then I'll be like oh god a gallery like just said no photographers and maybe what I'm doing is a joke and like I'll spend a few days driving myself insane like thinking it yeah. over and over in my head and then I get over it but yeah, yeah it's yeah, definitely it's, frustrating well I, I feel like you know, a lot of that kind of stuff is probably people who are just kind of doing their job and they might not even have a really good understanding of art. You know, the, the, the level that they might be at is they might not even the reason why they don't know a lot about art is because they're not artists. So what they're yeah. looking at and their opinion, it could be just so guided by the wrong things. Like I got I got a huge rejection today, massive one that I've been pushing for. And um at the end of the day, the reason why they said no, which I get this a lot, is we don't know what demographic you're going for. And I'm, and in my head, I'm like, uh, but but people like it, like all these different ages like it. Why do we have to pick this little demographic? And yeah. It's just, and I feel like, what, so a company doesn't want a, a product that sells to like teens and 20 year olds and kids like it, and adults like it, you know what I mean? It's like what company wouldn't love that it's just yeah that it's crazy yeah i think i think it's like they just they think it's a gamble or something even though like your numbers could show or just your track record shows that yeah a lot of people buy it purchase it like it follow it whatever yeah. um yeah it's, it's strange and like i even made the mistake when i first started doing all this of kind of like pigeonholing again when i'd like vend i'd i'd look at the people coming up to look at my work and i'd see someone you know someone in their 50s dressed really nicely um kind of like a yuppie looking person yeah. and i'd be like oh god they're gonna look at this and be like what the hell is this and they it's the opposite they end up buying like 10 things that's awesome. and that and that that's the thing is you can't tell i mean well, I, I have one you know, one. I thought, oh, it's all going to be like goth looking people yeah. buying my <laughs> stuff, which is so stupid. I can't believe I thought that way. But like I, I had to teach myself to not think that way because it's like I don't know what, you know, some people again, it was me doing what I what I think is wrong. And it's judging the outward appearance of someone 
like I don't know what's inside them. I don't know what they like. I don't know what's in their house, but well, but it's the same thing what you're talking about. Like just yeah. how do they know? I mean, I want to share <laughs> one little thing with you though about that because I I've done a lot of conventions. There is a certain type of jacket that's super popular, and I won't say what it is because I don't want to be a total dick. But every <laughs> time they'll come up to my booth and they'll say like my work. But every time I go, they've never bought them from me. And it, it's holding solid 100%. I'll tell you the, I'll tell you the <laughs> brand afterwards. But it's it's a super popular jacket that says the name on the back of it. And every time I see it, or it says it really small in the front, I think. But um, it, it's it's a, it's 100%. Like, I've, I've, I've come close on some. I'm like, is it going to break my rule? And I don't know if I'm just... <laughs> Like, I don't know if I'm just, like, saying out loud to him, like, you, you motherfucker, you mother... Like, I don't know if I'm doing that. <laughs> You're sending out a vibe before they even get there. They're yeah, picking up yeah. Yeah. Maybe, but maybe that's what it is, but... You're like, influencing thing their observation. Say. Yeah. But, yeah, I know what you mean, like, you know, doing the different cons, sometimes you get... Especially at first, you get really surprised. You're like, oh, wow, like, people in their 70s like my work. People, Little kids like it or whatever. Right. I'm sure, I'm sure kids like your work a lot, I would think. Yeah, yeah, actually, kid, it, they do, and sometimes, like, it's it's weird, the kids will be looking at my work, and the parents will be kind of just like, eh, come on, let's get out of here, but I'm like, and that's disappointing, too, because I'm just like, come on, man, like, what, it, it's, it's weird, like, yeah, like, they don't want them looking at it, but there's a lot of, like, cool parents that, like, let their kids, like, pick stuff out, and they'll, like, purchase for sure. it for them, but... Yeah, it's, I mean, and there, there's so much stigma, too, around, like, kind of the darker type art. Um, some people just, it's like there's so many sides to life, but people just, like, shun that kind of thing, you know? It's, like I said, growing up and not being able to say, like, hey, I think I'm depressed. It's kind of the same yeah. thing. It's like, it's like too taboo, like, oh, eh, no, I don't want to. But it's like, that's that's a part of life. There's nothing wrong with, you know, engaging with something that's not, you know, flowery or whatever. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I feel like sometimes with darkness, at least you kind of, you kind of know what you're getting rather than there might be this smiley, pretty thing and you don't see the darkness that's inside of it, you know, and, and I think that's maybe the problem slight with society is that we bait too many people base things on the cover and that like they don't know the truth that's underneath. Right. Yeah. Uh, as I'm saying, I'm like, am I just sounding really cliche? <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it's, it's definitely, I mean, with my, like with my stuff, it's fun. I always think about, it. I'm like, man, like I, I do a lot of like colorful stuff. Like I'm, I don't really do, in your face like this is supposed to be like fucked up and scary yeah. and i actually don't mean it to be like again going back to the whole it just kind of comes to me like i just do what it's like oh i have this like split second of it come this idea comes to me i'm just gonna do it so i'm not like sitting there thinking like how fucked up can i make this how it's yeah. not for like shock value or anything but like a lot of my stuff is like colorful but people are <clears throat> still sometimes like freaked out by it yeah which yeah. kind of goes along with what you said like it, it takes like you know it takes like reading into it for for whoever wants to read into it i guess it's with art it's the it's the willingness of the viewer to let it kind of take hold of them for a little bit yeah and I, th I think your work definitely strikes a good balance between grotesque and beauty because you you do have a lot of you know flowers and and themes like that in your work in, inside the juxtaposition of these you know abandoned places with these like you know usually you know these beautiful forms of these women and uh like that juxtaposition to me is kind of what's what strikes me when i look at your work and i even like um you know it's not as as gritty but a lot of the underwater photography actually makes it creeps me out the most I, I think it's the most beautiful <laughs> but it creeps me out because i have an irrational fear of just dark water the, the idea that well there's probably a shark or an alligator in there that's going to eat me any second it's yeah. like e even in a swimming pool you're like oh there's a shark's gonna eat me i don't know why but that's just gonna happen and i was wondering if you know is, is that something that you're looking to play on with the water photography at all that this idea of, of um you know, so to make people scared <laughs> 
this brings up like a really funny uh, i i have this thing i looked it up i've had it for years it's a phobia and like four to five years ago i looked it up so originally i was like i have this fear of man-made things in water i'm a good swimmer i'm not afraid of swimming i'm not afraid of water but like when there's like man-made shit like a like a boat or like a bridge <laughs> going into the it sounds crazy so then like one night i'm like i wonder like i can't be the only person that feels this way so i google searched fear of man-made things in water and it's a phobia it's called submechanophobia and then they accompanied it with a ton of pictures that me i was like oh shit this is the word like some of the pictures were like there was like a friggin plane like a plane that had crashed and it's like in the ocean and there was a diver like super tiny at the nose of the plane and you see the plane go like into the depths and i was like fuck no like yeah, i was looking you're, at this like shaking you're you're describing that and it's actually giving me goosebumps that's i'm i'm afraid of that <laughs> stuff too <laughs> oh and my I think, god i think i think you just like put something into my brain i just i just like connected some dots like yeah it's like, like man-made old, shit yeah you know, like an old dock that like goes just underwater <laughs> and then like yep. it, it goes it goes out into darkness oh yeah or like yes those Fuck aerial shots no. of like yeah boats at the bottom of like lakes and stuff that like yeah the yeah. very first time <laughs> I, like, knew I, like, really had that bad, I was in high school, and my friend brought me to her grandparents' lake house, and we swam out pretty far, and there was, like, a boy, a bowie, like, on a chain, like, a giant chain, and she, like, took me out to it, and I'm, like, I looked underwater at the chain, and the chain was, like, probably, like, the width of, like, a forearm, and, like, I looked at it, and I saw it just go down into the depths, and I started, like, freaking out, like, flailing. I was like, we gotta get back, we gotta get the... And I don't even like being in the water knowing it's, like, touching it. I don't I don't even know yeah. how to explain it. It's the weirdest... No, you're, you're describing like, it, and I'm like... if you were to drop me... <laughs> <laughs> if you were to drop me, even though you you would be, like, you're safe, whatever, if you were to drop me near like a big boat like in the water i my heart would explode like i would die i wouldn't be safe because i would die of a heart attack no it's funny kid so but but you can you can say that that is an irrational fear right you can say i have this fear but i know that it's irrational yeah because i don't i don't know why like i know it, like i said it's not that i'm afraid of swimming I, uh, I yeah I don't I try right. to like analyze it constantly it's it's I don't know if it's because I need to see the origin of things and the fact mm -hmm. that it goes down into the depths maybe that but what would be in the depths that scares me Here, here's uh, like I'm not afraid of a shark or like it just terrifies me Here, here's what I'm thinking in your next DMT you can find out <laughs> yeah. um, I think that please you and, answer me this. I, I think that you and Jeff were, uh, and I'm just you know thinking stuff out loud. Is maybe you guys died in another lifetime, like you guys drowned on a boat or something? Yeah, like it, there has to be some sort of reason for it. I just well, I don't understand, and I'm the kind of person that's pretty like. You know, like I go into like abandoned hospitals, like in the dark. Yeah, that's not scary. <laughs> stuff like that and it doesn't bother me i'm like why is this and why is it man-made things and why is it a specific thing have, have you but, seen any demons or dark things in in those kind of places like um, evil spirits or anything like that i mean there's definitely not really seen there's been like weird shit that's happened like um there's definitely a a, a different feel like a heaviness um yeah. The energy. Yeah, like you just, it, it's weird. It's kind of like undes indescribable. Like it's, it's like you go, it's like you're just, as soon as you like go into that building, it's like another dimension <laughs> that just feels strange. Um, right. But yeah, like I've had like weird shit where people were just like acting weird, like people that don't like fuck around. Like it's not like, I, w I never, go, you know, it's not like a paranormal thing where it's like, 
if you're a ghost, uh, not tap on my forehead three times, like (laughs) nothing like that. But like, I've had people that are totally not the kind of people that would admit anything weird happened, like just acting strange. And then they have like no recollection of it after (laughs) the fact. Um, just like, yeah, really weird stuff like I I remember I shot this model once at this abandoned hospital and like um it was a place that we usually went in they call it like pre-dawning so you go like before the sun comes up because when it when it's dark out it's easy to see if like headlights are coming and people can't see you so it's kind of like just easier to like sneak in um and I always like to be like safe so I prefer doing that when I can so like we went to this place and uh, I had just met this model. And so it was like me, the model and like two other people that I, I was friends with. And like, we got into this building and we were kind of, what we do is like, we get in and then we just kind of like sit there and wait for the sun to come up to start shooting. And I think we were like, we just started smoking or so- smoking weed or something. And like this model is like, on like this bed i'll never forget like the moonlight was kind of coming in the window and she was like on this bed curled up and she was crying and i was like oh fuck like i'm whispering to the other people i'm with i'm like dude put up like i was like maybe she's like i thought it was because we were smoking that i was like fuck (laughs) we should have asked like if it made her uncomfortable then i felt like an asshole um so the sun comes up we start shooting i feel bad i feel super awkward i mean everything's kind of going fine but i'm like fuck like she was crying like what did we do so like i end up like i go home edit the pictures send her the the pictures and like i don't talk to her for a while i was just like oh here's the pictures and then i kind of don't really talk to her because i was like paranoid i'm like shit like i pissed her off or something so then, like, a couple of months later, she messaged me, and she was like, hey, you want to shoot again? Like, I, I had a really good time, and, like, I was I was just, like, dumbfounded. I was like, oh, shit, I was like, I'm relieved, because, like, I- I'm sorry if I did anything to offend you. Like, I-, I didn't, I don't know if you had, like, a bad day or whatever. I don't, I, I was trying to, like, ask her, like, what happened, and she was like, what? Like, I, she was like, I wasn't crying. And, like, we saw, like, she was crying. And she has no recollection of that happening. It was the weirdest thing. So, like, I wasn't talking to her because I thought she was pissed at me or, like, offended. (laughs) So, like, shit like that where it's like, and that's happened a few times where people are just like, what? I, I don't remember. And it's like, what? What the hell happened? I mean... Yeah, it, uh, it, it's just weird shit like that where it's just like, all right, that happened. I don't know why or what the hell that was all about, but um, yeah, it almost, it almost sounds like a minor possession or something like that. Yeah, yeah, like I had I had another like guy friend, um, same building too. Like the, this place was like it was like forty eight buildings. Uh, it was it's Norwich State Hospital. It's not even there anymore. It was in Connecticut. Um, and it was all connected by like underground tunnels. Um, and like, same thing. We went to the same building. Cause like, once you get into this building, it was like the closest one to the woods. Like we'd cut, there was like train tracks we'd walk down and then we'd like go up this hill into the woods and like, you know, you're hidden in the woods and like this particular building just happened to be the closest that you could like, just like sprint across the property and get in. So same building dark again and like we were trying to get up to the attic to just kind of like hang out there and wait for the sun to come up and we we kept looking for it was three of us and like me and the other person were like where's art like what we're like art and obviously you can't yell there's like security guards there at the time so you can't like yell his name out (laughs) so i'm like whisper yelling i'm like art like where where are you what the and it was so pitch black in there that morning like before the sun came up like you couldn't see like inches in front of you it was just like a a super dark night so finally after like five minutes of looking for this person i like smashed into him on accident and he was like just kind of weird like like i was like dude what are you doing like what the fuck and he was just kind of like mumbling 
so I had to like kind of grab him and like guide him up to the attic of this place and he ended up like just going on the floor and like sleeping with like just like in a fetal position ironically just like that girl on the bed I was like what the fuck so like the sun comes up and like he kind of like snaps out of it and we're like dude like why why are you fucking around like because honestly like you can get arrested I mean yeah you know, if you get caught or it's like, I wanted to go up a few levels because we were on like a ground level where there was a lot of like windows and shit. And I didn't want like the security to drive by and see us like standing there like doofus is. <laughs> so we were like, what are you doing, dude? Like, what's the deal? And he's like, what do you mean? Like, I, you guys weren't calling. He had like no recollection of that whole, like that whole time where we're looking for him. He didn't know he like fell asleep. It's like he just kind of snapped out of it. Hmm. It's like, what the fuck? And then that it like weirded me out for a while. Like I didn't go to that place for a while because yeah. I was like, okay, this is getting really <laughs> creepy. I don't know what the hell's going on, but yeah, it's definitely like even houses. Like I go in certain houses and it's like, oh, this is a weird. Because even it's like you got to think like, why did these people just up and leave? And like they're, it, it's yeah. like. Some of them, it's like literally they were just sucked up into the sky and like everything's left there. Like I've been to places where like the cereal is like just all hard and moldy because they literally just left what they were eating on the table. It's really bizarre. (laughs) Yeah, it's creepy. Hmm. So I'm just going to throw it back because I'm still fascinated by the DMT aliens thing. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> what 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 are these uh what do they seem like? Because I've heard I heard like sort of the similar stories, but t- um, can you tell us anything about like the aliens? Uh, so it's like so it's weird because it, it's like trying to explain something in materials that aren't of our world. Right. Yeah. So like I want to be like. It's kind of like paintings, but almost electronic, but also uh, it to me, it's like every single every single like imagery of every religion that's out there is like uh, in one almost for starters in terms of like, do do um, you think this is like a simulation then? Does that does that show that, that this could be a simulation? I don't know. It, it's weird because when you, <clears throat> it's it's familiar. It as fucked up as it is, as much. I mean, because it's definitely like what the fuck. Like, yeah. The first time I did it, I was like, holy shit! Like, what just happened? But in the same sense, it's almost familiar, and it's it's weird because like they say that it's supposedly like th- there's like connections that that's kind of like where you go when you die like that's kind of like a death thing yeah um and i can kind of see that like i'm like is that where we were before we were born that's another thing i always drive myself insane thinking about i'm like because technically before we were born we were dead because we weren't alive um well yeah i mean it's it's i always feel like we were somewhere else and we kind of we had a mission and we like, well, let's go. We'll do We'll go back and we'll, we'll try to grow more this time. Oh, yes. We, we were and assholes. It, <laughs> yeah. It kind of feels that way though. Like is fucked up and unbelievable and like indescribable as it is. It there's something about it that feels familiar. Yeah. Um, that's, cool. that's like, so the, it's, it's like these, usually it's like giants. Like it's just like, expi- <laughs> okay. it's like these infinite beings. I can't even explain it. It's, it's so weird because you're not, it's more you're feeling it, but you see what you feel. Like you're not seeing with your eyes, you're seeing with right. your being. Um, I'm going to be honest too. I know, ne- okay, you know, Alex Gray, uh, yeah, the artist that yeah. never understood his work, never really liked it at yeah. all, didn't get it. Then I did DMT and I was like, holy fuck. So what he paints, like with all the eyes and shit, like that is it. Like the yeah. walls of eyes, it literally, like there's no fucking way he's not doing that. Like he's <laughs> seeing that, from, he's bringing that back from 
like he and that's what that's what what's crazy about him is i'm like holy shit like he is the only one there's a few other artists that i'm like oh wow there's this guy daniel popper Mm -hmm. um i think he goes by just daniel popper on instagram and he does sculptures and i fucking gasped when i found i randomly found his account but i was like holy shit it, it the imagery of what he makes like these giant wooden sculptures for like festivals and shit but they're like massive like heads and they have like hands and it's crazy like if you guys look him up it's just insane but like him and alex gray like kind of the combination of what they do is like exactly what i see it's weird because some people i think some people just confuse the the verbiage of what they're seeing like i've heard a lot of like uh what is it like machine elves or something i'm like what the fuck is i don't understand that i mean i guess we're all different so maybe people are seeing that but i think i think they're confused it's very geometric Mm -hmm. very geometric uh and there's like stages of it it's like you smoke it and there's like the stage where you're lit like you feel you know in doctor strange when she like fucking punches him out of his body it's like that like you feel that it's like boom like you just like you just shoot like straight up um and you like ride like that free i feel like you ride this frequency of like yourself like that's your soul um Mm -hmm. and like you kind of like It's that it's like you start and you feel yourself like boom, like you get punched out of your body. And then like it's a bunch of like Alex Gray, like kind of like very geometric, like the shapes, too. It's like you would never in your life know that you could fathom that. Like, like I said, you're not really seeing it. You're not really feeling it. But whatever it is you would never think anything could make you experience or see something like that and then after that it's like the third stage that they call like kind of like the breaking through stage where it's like then you come across like whatever those be- those beings are and they just like show you whatever the fuck it- they're going to show you and there's really like no fighting yeah. it i guess like i mean <sighs> I don't understand how people have bad trips on it, but I get like, I'm just all like open to them. Like whatever, like do whatever you're going to do. But I could see like wanting to fight it or like the fact that it's so jarringly different and insane. I could see people freaking out because it's just, yeah, it's like indescribable. It's, (laughs) I wish there was like a way to record it or like, yeah it's crazy but every so often i'll see like other artists that i'm like fuck like they they've been there (laughs) you know i mean it's like holy shit like you and that's why like you know joking about the joe rogan thing but like i understand why he brings it up to people all the time because it's like it's almost like you need like a support group not that it's a bad thing but it's like have you been there (laughs) like have you have you like you just need to find other people where it's like yes you understand because then you like just question so much shit it, it's it's crazy it's yeah well I, I'm, I'm glad it didn't highly influence your art style really because uh, you know i love what you're doing and i've never been like you said i've never been attracted to that kind of art either like it just seems and maybe because i associate it with like you know, growing up, like, hippie kids liked it and stuff like that. and, and Right, that, exactly. You know, I think maybe that's w- what the problem is. But um, what was I going to say? Well, it, it always makes me think that there's more to this life than what it seems. And also that we're all kind of under this brainwashed, like, this is what life is. It's about car insurance. And yeah, you need to have a job. Yeah. Like, it's just this thing. And you know i can't take that stuff so it's it's nice to know like hey you came from this place that's magical there is magic in life itself it's just there's a few layers that are trying to hide it you know and for some reason absolutely and even the whole like i i don't even believe in coincidences anymore it's like man like that it's like the more i think about shit that just happens to me and other people and i'm like 
that's like too it's too much to be a coincidence like it's just too out there to even just pass it off as oh it was a coincidence and (laughs) i find like the more that i'm open to knowing that there's like purpose or like that yeah it's it's not a coincidence it's it's literally yeah being more open to believing believing in just stuff like that I, i don't even know what stuff but just yeah, just having like an open mindedness about stuff, it it happens more and more. It's it's kind of crazy. Yeah, I I always feel like the masses are being guided by something that almost maybe isn't even human. Like I I feel like there's this shift of like steering the masses somewhere, and, and either it's people in power that want to protect themselves or or something bigger. But I've always kind of felt that way. Yeah, it's it's very strange. I I cuz then yeah, I make myself crazy thinking about all this shit and I'm like, <laughs> what like everyone else does, it's like what is our purpose here? Like what it can't be over like when we die, there has to be mm-hmm. you know, and I think I think that's why art is important is for the people that, you know, kind of taking it back to what we were talking about before, the people that it just comes to them. I I think that it, it it's art is a way of reminding people of what it used to be or what it could be or what it should be i don't know but there's that's why art is so important just on any level music you know whatever i agree Um, yeah and i and i think some people will see that too because like every so often someone will like look at my shit and they'll be like (laughs) it's really it's strange they'll be like i dreamt that like this exact picture that you took (laughs) and it's almost like yeah like i it like sometimes i feel like i don't want to even take the credit for anything it's like yep something's just sending that to me and i'm just doing it as a reminder to everyone that something i don't know what the reminder is but (laughs) yeah yeah it's it's a strange I don't even know what. Have I sounded crazy this whole? Thing? No, no. See, now you're just encur- <laughs> you're encouraging Gus because I've heard him talk so much about this. Oh, there's ideas floating around there, and then they jump into somebody's head, and then they're not even your ideas. Or so you're just you're just yeah. What Gus always tells me. So now you're just influencing his 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 theories. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm calling crazy theories. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've I've taught I've just been thinking about that like that whole like we're just like you know tuning into whatever we're 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 just the the messengers it's not you know it's not i can't take credit for anything i i've that's something like in the past year i've kind of been like thinking about and like i i haven't talked to much artists about it but the few that i have feel the same way like i i just did this event down in north carolina and there was this guy um Shit, I think he goes by Shadow Realm or something. I can't remember his name. I'm kicking myself for it. But um, just this, like, normal-ass looking guy, like, oh. middle-aged. And he his paintings were so dark and amazing. Like, they came from somewhere else. And it's like, you look at this dude and it's like, I, I, like, I couldn't stop staring at him. It's like, what the fuck? Like, so I had that conversation with him and he, he thought the same thing. He's like, yeah, I just kind of, I just kind of do it. Cause like this, this dude looks nothing like not again, not that you have to look a certain way, but I was just like, he was like a happy go lucky, like dude, like yeah. doing this, like super, super dark, like like amazing paintings i was just like what the fuck and we were talking about it and he yeah he agreed so i was like yes like i got some verification from someone else that like i'm not crazy like this is an actual like i i'm I'm huge into movies i fucking i love movies like over anything and like i think of people like stanley kubrick like yeah. where the fuck like look at him like look at what he looked like just this like lumpy ass dude <laughs> doing this psychological like what the fuck like yeah. how does anyone like 2001 space odyssey like done in the 60s like what the fuck you know it's like there's no way that didn't come from somewhere else like that was just like transmitted into his body and he did it. Uh, like, I don't believe anything else. 
Yeah, he, he's pretty awesome. And, and I mean, I always say, um, you know, without art, and, and I didn't come up with this, this just kind of came to me, is downloaded me. Without art, we, we are savages, like we become savage. And I think that's a true statement. You know, if we don't have art, you, know, you strip it all away. It's like, what are we? We're these like, just kind of cruel. I don't even know if it's cruel, but just savage, almost more like animals, you know? Right. Yeah. But like, we're even worse than animals, I feel, because we have like less empathy yeah. sometimes. It's, yeah, it's, it's crazy. I agree. And yeah, we, I, we always need the reminders of like, yeah, like just stop stop it like it's a like it's a newspaper boop to the nose like you gotta you gotta snap out of it because like you said the masses thing before it's like man like yeah it's like we're taught that you know you you gotta work for someone and you gotta have health insurance and you have to get married at a certain age and you have to have kids and it's like like people are scared to not do that yeah. Like, a lot of my friends are, you know, like, high school friends or whatever. People I grew up with are like, oh, I wish I could, like, you know, because I, like, travel a lot. And they're always like, I wish I could do that. It's like, but they never <laughs> right. finish the sentence. I feel like the rest of the sentence is, but I'm in a fucking prison. I made the mistake <laughs> of doing. Like, not that they don't love their families or whatever, but it's like, yeah. then why didn't you just. Do, like if you wish you could do something why didn't you it's not like i'm doing anything like so far out there that you know i you know i i did work in like retail a shitty retail job for like 13 years before i became like a self-employed artist but like still it's it's crazy to me that like there's like that blueprint of what we're absolutely supposed to do yeah yeah and i think that's just brainwashed into people uh, you, yeah you know, and and you know i'm not against people that do that in any way i just feel like if you're unhappy with it at any moment i feel like you could step up and, and change and take action and you could right find your I, yeah it's, it's more to me yeah definitely not against that and i think i love like seeing that you know my my friends are having families and all that but it's the people that are like scared into it that i know yeah. there's a lot of people that were scared into it and it's just it's kind of right. sad because it's like, man, I remember, you know, when we were younger, like you, you did all this stuff and then you just stopped. Yeah. I think that's when you lose your child spirit completely. Yeah. That happens. Um, so we're like a little over an hour, I think. And I know we Jeff likes to keep the ship a little bit cozy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just type ship. Yeah, you think it's a, it's a, it's a nice ship. <laughs> in the sea. It, it, it's it's deep in the ocean oh god get um, it out of there oops <laughs> pull it out <laughs> but yeah i mean this has been a wonderful conversation and and could go on forever almost you know I, yeah I'm just yeah thank you both yeah thank you I, i'm really grateful to have you on and, and i hope i get to work with you someday um as i talked to you about i don't know if you remember in the past but uh yeah i mean this is this has been awesome yeah, it totally hit me up. Like I said, I'm always down to like travel and work with new people. So definitely. Yeah, th thanks for being on the podcast. Where can people uh, find out about what what you got going on or see some more of your work? Um, so I have my website, uh, KarenJerzikPhoto.com. Uh, same thing on Facebook, Karen Jerzik Photo, and my Instagram I think is uh, Karen Dot Photo. Um, so any of those, like, even if you go to just my website, you can find all my other social media off of that. Sweet. Awesome. Great. Thanks so much, Karen, for being on the show. And for everybody else, hopefully you can join us on the next one. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you guys. Mm -hmm.